What if after these 10 plus years of waiting, GTA 6 releases and the game just sucks? I know I would be devastated, I know you, the person watching, would be devastated, and we would be heartbroken like we just got dumped by our crush after being together for like 5 years. Let's hope that's not the case, but in this video, we're gonna take a look at why it could happen. The first reason being the expectation of it. Everybody, including me, has a ridiculously high expectation for a game like GTA 6, and it's no joke that if it has such a high expectation, expectation, there's a chance it's going to be a huge letdown if they don't meet the high standard everyone has for it. As much as I love Rockstar, I would not want to be them right now because they probably have a ton of pressure on their backs. GTA 5 came out when I just started middle school when I was a little 6th grader, and GTA 6 is set to come out about 4 years after graduating high school. If I was in college or university, that means I would be in my final year of studies if not graduating university. If you were starting 1st grade when GTA 5 came came out, you would be almost graduating high school. That is absolutely insane. The next reason GTA 6 could miserably fail is because of it possibly being less edgy than Grand Theft Auto 5. There's been a couple rumors that GTA 6 could be less edgy because of this day and age being a lot more sensitive and people just really care about being politically correct or whatever you want to call it. Basically, nowadays you really have to watch what you're saying and that could be the same for what they can and can't put inside of GTA 6. Maybe Maybe the storyline, maybe just the things that contacts tell you in GTA 6 online or whatever it's gonna be. And because of that, it would make sense that the game might not be as edgy and they can't say what they could say before, which I know a lot of people aren't gonna like. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I personally think they should stick with it being GTA. If GTA is like that, they should just stick with that, regardless of other people might saying, oh, this is wrong to say. Why is this in a video game? Blah, blah, blah. What's your opinion on it? Let me know in the comments. The next reason is not enough realistic aspects in the game. What I mean by this, I'm gonna use an example, enterable buildings. In GTA 5, there's not very many enterable buildings. Yeah, there's a lot of different buildings and the map is pretty big and the game came out once again back in 2013. So it's kind of understandable and I guess a bit excused for GTA 5, but for a brand new GTA game coming out roughly in 2024, even if the map is huge, we should still expect a lot more enterable buildings so the map feels a lot more realistic. If we do end up being able to enter a lot of buildings. I'm hoping at the very least it's going to be through a loading screen, although ideally it'd be best if we can just smoothly enter it kind of like we go in a grocery store or a clothing store and stuff like that just because that'd be by far the most realistic. In GTA 5 we have a good amount of basketball courts and we also have a soccer field in game and it'd be super cool if in GTA 6 we just see NPCs playing pickup games. What if we were able to just go up to the courts and press right on the d-pad to play and then we can select single player and play against the NPCs or multiplayer against other online players, that would be absolutely sick. Because in GTA 5, they don't utilize the social space as well, like parks and different sports fields. If we end up getting a GTA 6 that doesn't have these realistic features in it, that's going to be a huge letdown for a lot of people and overall a huge miss by Rockstar. The next one is not enough a variety of missions and just boring missions in general. I would say GTA 5 story mode has some pretty cool missions, but in online, over the years, there's just too similar of missions that just aren't exciting enough and don't have anything really unique in them. A lot of them is just driving, maybe shooting some enemies while you're driving and then taking out some NPCs at a certain location, maybe stealing something and then delivering it to a place. I'm not saying that's a bad structure for missions. I think that's actually a pretty good one, but there's too many of them that are very basic like that and have the same exact idea and it's not really exciting or anything. Most of the time people just find them boring and want to end the mission and get the money and RP already. I think this one kind of ties back to the last one we talked about, the realistic aspects, because if we have more realistic aspects, the missions are automatically going to be way better, because Rockstar has way more things they could do, for example, with a specific office building or a new function that's not in GTA 5. There's a lot of positive things that could come out of more realistic aspects. I'm sure the GTA 6 storyline is going to be fantastic. It's really about the loads of different missions GTA 6 Online is going to have, or whatever they're going to call the online version, that's going to determine how good the missions really are. The heist finales are really good and unique, but they're not exactly the missions we're talking about. The next reason is a different one. It's not exactly correlated to the game, but more who makes the game. I'm talking about the team and the staff of Rockstar Games. If you don't know, since the launch of GTA 5, a good amount of people at Rockstar have left the company. One of the biggest names is the Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser. He left back in 2020, and alongside him, a good amount of people that made GTA 5 have left 
left Rockstar. And it's really important for Rockstar to have someone fill in their spots, which is definitely not going to be easy. It brings up a big question, can these new people or can Rockstar games with all the people that left their staff since the launch of GTA 5 make a better game than GTA 5 was? Whoever is replacing the position of everyone that left Rockstar games, whether that's the co-founder or all the other important positions that someone has to fill in to make GTA 6, they have to know what they're doing and they have to know how to make a GTA game. Not only a GTA game, but the most anticipated video game of all time probably. Can these new guys or fillers will call them go in the shoes of these pretty legendary people that made GTA 5 and create the best ultimate next GTA game. I hope they learn from the staff that's been there since day one and hopefully they get taught the Rockstar way or the GTA way because the GTA way is the best way. The next reason GTA 6 could fail terribly is because of the wrong location chosen for it. People have been dying to know the location of GTA 6 and it is a huge part of the game. I mean that's where everything's gonna be played both story mode and GTA online. I mean it's the base of the entire game and if that location turns out to be a letdown I don't know maybe they just recreated some old GTA game and it feels a lot more just like a remaster than a new GTA game. It would be a complete and utter flop from the first impressions of the game. I said this in the GTA 6 wishlist video. I actually don't mind seeing a remastered version of an old GTA map but it has to be a hybrid with a new location and a new map and a new city. It needs to have at least most of it fresh and new because if most of it turns out to be more of a remastered thing that's just gonna feel recycled and having this ginormous game that everyone's waiting for to feel recycled and not fresh and top tier that's gonna be an absolute killer. The next reason which is a super crucial one is Rockstar not supporting the game enough after it's been launched. Look at Fortnite's good few years and look where that's got it. Epic Games did a great job supporting the game and adding pretty fresh content. It wasn't always the perfect content but it was consistent and they did do it every like what week or two. The thing is that most of it was small updates so what I think they should do instead of having two big DLCs a year basically every six months I definitely think it's doable if they work hard enough and are attentive enough to the game we should get an awesome DLC every two months maybe every month if possible. I don't think a DLC every two months is that impossible for Rockstar to do that's just my personal opinion but I think with a huge game like GTA 6 is gonna be it needs to have that great support by the company that made it or else in the years to come after the game releases it's just gonna start dying a little bit. After a DLC comes out in GTA 5 people play it again and after a bit it's just drip feed content and there isn't that much to do. So like we said earlier keeping the game fresh with updates this time that's gonna be huge and crucial for GTA 6's ongoing success long term. Next up is a very simple question and that is what can they do next? Can they top GTA 5? That is the huge question that everyone is dying to know. We'll only actually know this once the game comes out but when you think about it it's not gonna be easy to top what they've done with GTA 5. Thinking of great ideas to innovate an incredible game like GTA 5 is a very hard task and you need a very good creative team and a great overall company to come up with ideas to make the best game possible better than what you've done previously. Now that you know why GTA 6 could possibly be a massive flop click the video on screen now for why GTA 6 will be the biggest video game that's ever released. I hope you all enjoy that video and peace.